made these extracts and I'm not sure I should have had that one in it, this bit in it, I could have, I could have started here, but we've had Feste's song and now Feste, um, Elsino pays for the song and Feste says this to him, um, may the melancholy God protect thee and make, and the tailor make thy doublet of changeable taffeta for thy mind is a very opal. And we will now go and look at opals. Opal stone there. Ooh. I think it, they look lovely there. It's, can you see, they look different in different lights, like the light, it, depending on what everything does, of course, but depending on what light you're in, they look quite different. I quite like the ones that don't have as much in um, don't have as much in them. Oh, no, those aren't opals. There, so he's saying your mind is like that. Um, all different bits and bobs in it and changeable. It looks, they look lovely in the rings, don't they? Um, so back to this here, your mind is opal. Um, so he is speaking because he's the fool and he's allowed we we'll do this ye olde truth to power. He's getting up, say the most most powerful man in the world of the play. You are really changeable. Your mind is opal. And um, he, he's kind of allowed to say that sort of thing. He's meant to entertain. Um, he is the fool that he is the comedian. So off he goes. Does that spark or see no? into, um, all right, let me go and get, I'm not changing, I am having Olivia. I don't know, you could you could play it that way. That's what spurs him on to demand more Olivia courtship. So then Orsino says, right, I want everybody out of here apart from me and Cesario. So they're on their own, they're alone. Everyone came in to hear the song and then he wants to be back him and Cesario and we are talking in romantic um, cliche here get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty I don't know how often that's said in the play I must count it up but um, she's supposed to be cruel she's the sovereign the monarch of his heart um, these are, this is what you expect from her so he's going through the same romantic um, dance that he did before um, and that I love her because of her you know it's not her lands that I'm after it's her you know what she, that what Nate you know her nature what what she's like and it's my soul that's attracted now give her that sort of a line shockingly number one Viola argues so he's giving out instructions and she says um yeah but if she can't love you that's not going to happen we know that Viola knows that Olivia's in love with her. So we know there's even more to it, but at the same time, Olivia was absolutely categoric. No, I'm not going to be marrying Orsino. So she argues back and Orsino dismisses. This is what you've got to be able to do this. I'm modeling this for you. So she's arguing back and he, oh, I can't, no, I'm not taking no for an answer. No. Um, now we, this is traditional in romance, isn't it? That the man will turn up at the woman's house every day with a red rose or um, he will send her uh, chocolates every day. And cha it's got, we call it chasing. We chase someone and it, it, I've seen it in lots of films. It's changed a little bit, has it? Um, do we think of it more as um, stalking and uh, what, and uh, refusing to take no for an answer is, is like... Um, you know, it goes into rape trials and everything. So it, it is a romantic cliche that the man chasing the woman until she gives in, but it's got it's got slight extra things, maybe only in the last 10 or 20 years. This is absolutely standard for a romance. Um, but anyway, Viola is arguing, you know, if she can't love you, you've got to listen to her. He says no. And she says, you must. So this is the second she's arguing back again. And then she get 
it gets a lot of logic going here. What if it what if it was the other way around and that was some lady loved you and you couldn't love her, you can't love her, you tell her, so she has to take no for an answer. What can he do with this logic? He says, well, women aren't like me. I am much, my love is much more important and better than women's love. So he goes off into this um, ridiculous tirade. Um, no woman's heart's as big as mine. No woman's side uh, can bear a beating of a heart like mine. Their sides would explode. Their loves are just appetite. It's just their mouth, not their liver. It's just their appetite. There, there's nothing. But I'm like the sea. So I'm going to call this this word. I quite like aggrandizing. I am the biggest, best lover that there is. And you can't make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and how I love Olivia. And he says that to the woman who bizarrely loves him even after this speech. Put in the heart. He says, you know, so don't compare how much you love me and how much I love Olivia, who I don't know. Um, and Viola says, I, but I know, is she about to say, I know what it's like as a woman to love you or to love a man a lot that you can't have? I know what, we don't know what she's going to say. And um, Orsino stops his poetic, um, exaggerated speech. And what do you know? What do you know? So he's, she's pulling the conversation around. Off him, onto her, and he's taking an interest in her. So she changes it. I know how much women love men. In faith, they are as true of heart as we are. We're not, we're not better than them. Um, they're as true as we are. My father had a daughter loved a man. We know it's her. Oh, as might be perhaps were I a woman, I would love your lordship. So to me, that sounds a bit dangerous. Or she's like uh, playing with it and the audience knows that she is a woman who loves a lordship. And anyway, he is, um, he's caught now. And he's engaged in the, in the conversation and he's personally, I don't know if I should say engaged with romance. Okay. Um, so she is the opposite. Orsino is shouting, he's wallowing, he's listening to music, he's sending messengers. But this woman, she never told her love. She concealed it. She pined. Um, she sat like patience. She smiled at grief. So the, the silence, the opposite, the true feelings were silent. They weren't all the shouting of and the, the show of Orsino. Uh, we men may say more and swear more, but that doesn't prove anything. That's a really famous speech. You'll get lots of people writing about that, lots of critics writing about that one. And um, she's talking about herself, of course. We know she's talking about herself. And Orsino wants to know the end of the story. Did, did she die? And um, so that's the same, still in there. I am all the daughters of my father's house. So for the audience, what is she about to tell him? What's going on? Nope, I'm all the brothers. Who, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the only child now. But I don't know, I might still have a, we know what that means, I might still have a brother. And then it, on the, you can have the, the, it's quite a, a close, intimate conversation and you can have her snap back to normality. Sir, shall I to this lady? Oh, no, I'm, I'm not arguing with you anymore. I need to get out of this situation. We've become too intimate. So a return to normal normality. And um, also, you know, yeah, 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 do that. That's the thing. Give her this jewel. Say my love can. Uh, Give no plays, bide no denay, because it rhymes at the end. So it's traditional ending of the scene rhyme. So they're back on, yeah, you go, you woo the woman. Yeah, OK, I'll do that. And they've been getting a bit close to each other here. And they're kind of 
pulling back from it. 